Okay, so good morning all. I um, wanted to ponder this idea of the clickable parent and what you can do with it. Um, Kevin Gary has mentioned it a number of times in his videos. Uh, and since doing so, pretty much every time I see a video from Kevin, Kevin uh, there's people asking, how do we do the clickable parent? Um, and I know he's got videos that cover that. Um, but it still keeps coming up uh, in every video, pretty much. Um, now, Automatic CSS has a utility class you can add to an element, which makes it a clickable parent. And um, I want to expand on that and look at what else can we do with the clickable parent um, to affect other elements. And what I want to talk about there is if we roll our mouse over this design here, for example, uh, what happens is my image at the top here expands. Uh, there's an overlay, which is actually behind the image and behind the book now button, which goes over the top of this, uh, here, we, here goes your text uh, copy, which would be description. And our book now button here changes state. Now, the only thing that is actually a link or clickable link in this design is this heading here. So that is an H2, I think I've got it set at the moment. Uh, and that is a link. Uh, with that link, we set a before pseudo element, which is fully transparent, and it extends to the corners of this box. So when we roll over anywhere on that box, what we're actually rolling over is the transparent pseudo element of this link. That makes sense? I hope so. Uh, the rest of it is just CSS styling and positioning. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So that's the concept. Uh, the idea is that when you, let's say we tab to that. If I press tab, the only link in this card is that beach resort heading. You can see it's in focus when I tab to it. Do that again. Tab, there's my beach resort. So from an accessibility point of view, the first thing it finds is a heading saying it's a beach resort. And then it'll be a link, which links to, you know, book a room in our beach resort or whatever it is. So that's the idea of it. Um, now, semantically also, the ordering of this is actually the this heading and link in the HTML is actually above the image. We then have the image, the copy, and then the book now button. And we're just using ordering to change the visual look of that. So the screen readers will find this beach resort heading first, then we'll find the image, then the copy, then the button. Visually, we like to see the image at the top first. Okay, so that's the concept of it. Um, none of this styling matters for this particular discussion. All of the borders and colors and all that sort of stuff uh, I've done at an ID level uh, for this demo. Uh, doing a live site or a live application, you would not do that. You would actually use BEM classes for your styling to keep everything consistent. Uh, but this is just for the demo. I did not want additional classes on my elements getting in the way of this discussion. Um, so I've used the IDs just to style this demo up. Do not do that on a live, but definitely it's, I think it makes sense for the demo so it doesn't confuse things. All right, let's head over to the builder. What do we got in the builder? We got a basic uh, section, a uh, container, uh, which is set to grid. Uh, with a four column so that we've got something to work on that looks kind of like a box size. All right, we then have our first BEM element, which I've called clickable box. Now with uh, bricks, uh, I always prefix classes I create in bricks with B dash. If I create them in my external code manager, I, I prefix with X dash so I can tell straight away where was that class created. That's just a a system I use, use whatever you like. So the idea is we've first got our BEM uh, block, which is our clickable box. Okay, on that, um, again, I'm not worrying about any of the styling that's done. If I take this off, styling is all done at the ID level so we can actually see some sort of uh, graphical appeal here, but I'm not looking at any of that. I'm just looking at the functionality here. So in the clickable box, we need to set our position to relative. And the reason for that is that when we put a pseudo element on uh, this uh, link here, we want that to extend. We're going to position it absolutely and extend it to the extent of that box, so the corners of that box. So that box needs to be relative, so the absolutely position element knows where to extend to. All right. 
I think there was one other thing we said on here. Let's have a look. Or is that it? I think that's it. That's all we have on that clickable box uh, container or uh, what they call it, block, or whatever you like to call it. All right. We then just have a dummy background, which is part of the um, design, so we're not going to worry about that. And next BIM element is this clickable box heading. Okay. I'll come back to the trigger uh, when I've gone through it. The heading is basically just this link and it has no styling on it or no nothing on there right now okay so it's just basically linking to an external link um, and we probably put an aria label on that as well um, so that's just that standard link that's our heading uh, and then we have a trigger which we'll come back to that's the bit that does all the work now the clicker walks image is this image up here uh, and it's basically an image with an alt text on it set to a figure uh, figure because it is a positionable element so as far as I'm aware or semantic HTML um, if you're going to position images they should be a figure if you're going to just use it as a background like this one up here um, then it's just an image okay so that's just the clear box image uh, and then we've got the description which again has got nothing really fancy on it I think the layout what have we got in the layout here yeah, that's a mistake on my part. This because we're not talking about display, we're just talking about functionality. I put that on the class. I should have put that on the ID. So that's just, that's a mistake on my part. All right, now, so how does this all work? Let's go back to the heading. So we want this heading, which is a link, to be the clickable element that covers the entire box. So the way I've done that, I've created another BIM element called clickable trigger, a clickable box trigger. Now the reason I've done that is because you could have anything as the trigger. You might have some copy here. Um, again, I'm not talking about accessibility myself, I'm just talking about the functionality. So you might have two headings, maybe a heading two and a heading three, uh, or a heading three and a heading four, and it's deciding which one of those are you going to make the uh, trigger or the one that's going to uh, have the clickable parent. So I've just called it trigger. Uh, so under the trigger, we have in our style, we've just got CSS. Okay, now this is the CSS that makes it all work. Um, and now, what I'm doing here is setting the isolation, isolate on that root. Uh, and the reason I've done that is so that we can set the uh, index to 10 be whatever you want and the reason we've done that is because when you lay out elements in the dom uh, there's a semantic uh, z index stacking order even though you don't, if you don't give anything a number they all kind of have a uh, an applied stacking order of say zero one two three four um, it's not actually that number because if you apply a z index to one it's going to sit on top of an element that has nothing applied uh, but if you don't apply to any of them, it's kind of an implied order uh, of those. So because we're going to reorder these, um, there's an implied order. So what we're saying is that this here is actually, the link is actually the first element, um, but we want the, uh, the pseudo on that to cover the entire box. We want it to cover all the elements. So what I'm doing is telling it to set a Z index of 10, unlikely going to have more than 10 elements in this box. So that, that link with the trigger is going to appear at a Z index of 10 on top of all of the other elements. Okay, so we then have the before. This is the magic for the um, clickable parent. We've got a content of just a space. Uh, some people use just empty quotes. I found issues with Firefox, and maybe it was earlier versions I haven't tested since, where it didn't display if you had empty quotes. Um, so I would just always use a space. Absolute position, inset zero, which is the same as top, right, bottom zero being all zero uh, for my uh, positioning of that element. Uh, I set my background to black, uh, my Z index to minus one. So that is my before. The Z index to minus one is relevant to that actual heading because I've got my isolation set to isolate, which creates a new Z index stacking order. Okay. Uh, we then set the opacity zero, cursor to pointer, and a transition of 0.3 seconds. Okay. So what we're saying here is create a black box 
position absolutely extended all the way to the corners of the parent uh, that has a relative position. Um, uh, then set its opacity to zero so we can't see it. And a pointer so that we can see a pointer as we mouse over. And we want to transition that when we, we move over it. And then all we're going to do is that when we hover over the uh, heading uh, or this whatever's got this triggerable trigger on it, set the opacity to 0.5. And that's all that's doing. So move, you can see here as I roll over, over a 0.3 second period, it goes from transparent zero to 0.5 and then back to zero. That's all that's doing. That section there, just that background transparency, uh, but it also is making this link extend to the corners of its parent container because the four pseudo element is extending all that way. Even though we can't see it because it's transparent, it is still responding to mouse events. So that's the clickable parent part of it. Okay, now if we just did that, right? When we hover over this, uh, if we wanted to apply an effect to this box, let's say as we're doing here with our uh, opacity going to 0.5 for the before, that pseudo element is going to be on top of everything, top of the image, the button, everything. So everything is going to darken except for this link. Maybe you want that. Um, what I wanted was I wanted my button and my image to be on top of that. And I wanted them to, the button to change color uh, on the rollover. And I wanted the image to scale up a little bit. So that's the effect I wanted. So at this point, it's a little bit more than just the clickable parent. So what we do there is the first thing we need to do is because we're going to stick these on top of that pseudo element that's going to detect our mouse over, we need to select both those BEM elements, so the image and the button. We're going to set the Z index to 11, so anything above what we set the, uh, the trigger to. So anything above that, so that it's visible on top. And then we want to turn off our pointer events. If we don't turn off our pointer events, when you roll your mouse over, say, this button, the button now has the pointer events, which means that the background disappears, so it loses its state. Same with the button, same with the image. If we roll our mouse over the image, in fact, let's just do that. I'll show you what I mean. So now I've got those pointer events turned off, uh, not turned off. Watch what happens when I roll my mouse over the button. I lose my uh, pointer event on the, um, on the link. Same as the heading. So if I roll over there, roll my mouse over the heading, now I lose my pointer events. Okay? So the idea is you don't want the button and the image to have pointer events, so you switch them off. All right? What we then want to do is on the root, so on this trigger, when we hover, we want to use this tilde. Now, tilde means sibling uh, selector. We want to look for clickable box action button. Okay? So what do we got here? We've got a, we're looking at our heading here on the structure. Is that's the element we're on, so that's what we're looking at as root. These are siblings. Children would be under it. These are siblings because they're right next to it. So siblings could be above or below. All right. So what I'm doing here is saying, on this root, look for a sibling that's got a clickable box action button. Make the background green and the color white. All right. And with the image, um, I'll come back to this a little bit here. What we're doing in this same there, so on our hover of our trigger, look for a sibling that's got the Google box image and set the transform the scale to 1.1. Um, and because we could do this actually on the, in the Bricks UI, I just wanted to do this in the CSS to make it obvious what we're doing. Uh, because we don't have no transform on that image, um, I just set the transition to 0.6 seconds. So that gives us that nice fade in, fade, uh, zoom in, zoom out. And that's it. That's all we have to do to uh, make the clickable parent still have control over these um, elements that are appearing on top. Um, I think it works well. Uh, love to hear what you think. If you think it's wrong, let me know, but let me know with detail. And if you like this kind of thing, hit the subscribe and hit the like. Thank you.